See, we're starting to dismantle the pond now. All little rock in here. We will end up using quite a bit of this in the stream and waterfalls. One of the biggest things that concerns us when tearing into an existing water feature is we don't exactly know how it was built or what we're going to uncover as we're tearing that thing apart. We uncovered an incredible amount of stone. Check this out. Beautiful upper pooling area here. This nice little pinch waterfall right here. That sheet style almost waterfall into the shallow gravel. Turned out awesome. Look at the movement on the water. For all you ladies and or men, whoever is single and looking for a, a date, Corey is also single. Corey, how old are you? 22. 22? Okay. What's your astrological sign there? Hmm? I don't know. What's your birthday? <laughs> April 8th. And your social security number? Only from you. <laughs> Everybody, it's Chris with Team Aquascape. Today's project is going to be a slight little twist onto a existing pond. We are going to turn a pond into a pondless waterfall today. The reason we're gonna do that is that the homeowner is 92 years old, 92. So she figured over the last few years that she's been maintaining her pond is just a little bit too much for her to take care of. And she also wanted to add an additional stream and waterfalls onto her water feature. So knowing that she wanted to add an another element to her water feature and dissolve some of the maintenance, we decided to go a different route and turn her pond into a pondless waterfall. So you can see I'm already at the shop here at Aqualand. See the truck behind me? First things first, let's get loaded up and get ready to roll. Okay, you can see Juan putting the last of the tools in the truck. We've got our product, hand tools, and then we also have that truck over there that's towing our dump trailer. We've got the dingo and side cutter on there, plus about four yards of soil. So now that we've got everything buttoned up here at the shop, we are gonna give the customer a call, let her know that we're on our way, and then we are gonna get moving and try to beat traffic. Wish us luck. So Brian, now that you've done your revision <laughs> of the design, why don't you explain to us what is happening out here? We have a pond makeover, which actually happens quite a bit. And this one's not just a pond makeover, it's a pond into a pondless system. She's done with the maintenance of this. She just wants something simpler. She's a little older and just wants something she can come out and hear the sounds of the water and enjoy the aesthetics of a waterfall and everything. And when we have a slope like this, we can't really see it probably in the camera, but there's probably a good two foot slope yeah. from the water level there to up here. So we're gonna start with a waterfall that starts up here. Here. Get a little waterfall dropping still towards the house like we like to do into a pool. We just want to make this pool big enough and deep enough because one of our favorite things about the pond was not so much the fish, but it was the water lilies. So in our stream, we'll actually have a pool deep enough to house one of those water lilies. If you go 12 inches deep, 100% those hardy water lilies will come back year after year after year. And it'll look great right off the patio. We'll get a nice stream that meanders down this way. Obviously all the rock that comes out of here. And I knew she had some really nice big granite boulders. We'll get reused up in the stream. So the biggest part of today is gonna be demoing this whole thing, filling it in with our aqua blocks, and then backfilling with all the dirt. And hopefully the spoils that come out of here and the four yards you got in the chuck are enough to fill this hole in. But I think we'll be all right. So, Peace. <laughs> so everything else is going, the waterfalls back here, like obviously all the old pond equipment's going, correct? Correct. You've got a mishmash of stuff. You can mm -hmm. see, I mean, she actually built this herself with Neighborhood Kid wow. about 10 years ago. So they ran the plumbing, they did the best they could do. That stuff was probably level at one point mm -hmm. over there. But I think she's just at a point in her life where she knows she loves the water, she loves the birds, she loves her dog drinking from it, and this will give her a whole lot more enjoyment than the pond is doing right now. Yeah. So good to see the old stuff coming out. We've got most of the grass that we we're gonna take out so that that'll be a nice clean slate for Carlene, the homeowner. You see we're starting to dismantle the pond now. All little rock in here. We will end up using quite a bit of this. In the stream and waterfalls, we only have three tons of rock coming. So the stream, waterfalls, and even a lot of the basin will end up reusing a lot of this little rock, which is, you know, falls in line with our normal artistry, but sometimes we have a lot more bigger stone than this just to have that variation in scale. the last of the old pond. It is completely ripped out. Now it's time for us to not only accept the rock, which you can see the guy right behind me in the yellow shirt. That's our rock delivery. The rest of the guys are in back. We're going to start shaping that hole for our reservoir, get the aqua box put together, start getting that thing cut to fit, and then we'll get our fabric liner fabric in, and then our reservoir is done, and then we can start rocking this waterfalls.
Okay, so you can see we've got a lot of very clean granite in here and it's big, which clearly did not come out of the existing pond. This is all the new rock that you saw dropped out on the street. One of the challenging things is getting it back to the yard. You can see we've got a trail of plywood all the way out to the front yard. So everything's gonna come in. We're gonna use all this big rock in the stream waterfalls, rocking in the reservoir, all that good stuff. Nick's gonna start digging out this little cove area. This is where that waterfall dumping into the basin is going to be. Also, if you remember earlier in the video, we were talking about the challenge of the demolition of this thing. One of the biggest things that concerns us when tearing into an existing water feature is we don't exactly know how it was built or what we're going to uncover as we're tearing that thing apart. We uncovered an incredible amount of stone. You can see the pile behind me, a little pile behind that. And then there's already a bunch of rock that we lined along the bottom of the fence at the, at the homeowner's request to act as sort of a dog deterrent. She's got a Cocker Spaniel puppy that she doesn't want to get out. So we're gonna use some of this stuff, but the rest of this crap has to get out of here. So that's always one of the biggest challenges we face is getting rid of the material from an existing project. And the reason that's such a challenge is not only does it take considerable amount of labor to tear everything apart, but the other big thing is where the hell do we put it all? So when we're estimating these projects, we have to figure in the amount of time it's going to take to tear into these things, tear them apart, to get rid of all the crap that we're not gonna use, but then also figure out what the heck we're gonna do with it all. Fortunately for us, you can see we've got our one Azuzu behind us, which we brought the topsoil in to backfill around the hole. But then look at all this garbage that we have in this truck. This has stone in there, it's got sod, it's got the previous liner, it's got the, all the components. We've got pallets that our product came on. So when we are estimating these jobs, we have to figure in removal costs associated with that. And that's not just labor. That's what's it gonna take for us to potentially take that to a dump site or rent a dumpster or take it back to our shop. And then we have to figure out what that's gonna cost us to keep it at our shop until we can properly get rid of it, you know, so on and so forth. So we think about all these things. Of course, we pass that cost on to the customer and it's rolled into the estimate of the project, but those are all things that need to be considered when estimating a project like this. I would say the demolition and removal of all that existing stuff is our biggest challenge. The artistry is actually the easiest part for us typically. It's all the other logistical stuff that creates the challenges that we run into. So we try and do our best to be prepared for absolutely anything so that we can roll with the punches and evolve and adapt on the fly and overcome those challenges. So I'm gonna stop yapping and start helping these guys move back a little bit more rock and then we're gonna start rocking in our waterfalls, get our plumbing set and start rocking in that reservoir. Mm -hmm. Sweet little progress update. You can see we've got the reservoir almost all the way rocked in. Obviously we've got a lot of work left to do down here, but you can kind of see the general framework. The area inside of all these boulders in through here will all be gravel. We are going to gravel over the top of the lid here. We'll probably bring some of this gravel and then bring soil in back into there. And then this will kind of be our low edge that will act as our overflow area and everything pitches away from the house. You can see it's already sloped pretty heavily back there, but this will be our low edge that will accommodate any excess rainwater. Um, you can see Micho has already started framing in that bottom waterfalls, which will look really nice. He's got a little stone that he's gonna finish putting right down there to get that water to fall down and then twist around that rock and kind of do something like that. So it'll be a really neat effect. We've got probably, let's see, one, two, maybe three more waterfalls to build. We got a lot of dirt to get in, but it looks like a bomb went off back here right now, which is typically the case. But now, as you can see by Corey's purse, it's time for lunch. Look at the size of that thing. I mean, a guy that big needs a lunchbox that big. Am I right? Also, for all you ladies and or men, whoever is single and looking for a, a date, Corey is also single. Corey, how old are you? 22. 22, okay. What's your astrological sign there? Hmm? I don't know. What's your birthday? <laughs> April 8th. And your social security number? Only from you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so this is one of our favorite parts of the day, which is lunchtime. Um, you can see the guys found the shadiest tree on the street. We've got nosy neighbors driving by real slow. Now it's comida. It's on the menu today. Looks like a margarita pizza. What do we got over here? Pork chops and chili chipotle. Uh-oh. Juan, what do you got? Frijoles. Frijoles? We know Corey's got chicken and white rice. And then what does Nick have over there? Salad. 
right, so lunch is now over. Next thing we're gonna work on is getting this overlap in for the next section of our dream and waterfalls. Because we have enough of an elevation change from that rock to where water is in this bottom pooling area down through here, we are going to be able to pull off an overlap where the bottom liner goes up behind this top liner which drapes over the top. So that is a huge help and huge time saver that we can do that. What's up everybody, Nick here for Team Aquascape. You can see Micho right behind me rolling those rocks in a place for the last waterfall on this project. You can see Matt B over here picking up rocks, helping Micho. Those guys are getting that waterfall knocked out first thing this morning. We thought we were gonna be able to finish yesterday, but unfortunately we just couldn't get it done. So we split up crews today. Chris and Juan are over to starting another job. The rest of us here, we're gonna finish this thing up this morning, hopefully by lunchtime, I'm thinking. While those guys are working on waterfall, Matt and I are working on edges, just trying to button everything up. You can kind of see we got this whole basin in yesterday day got these two waterfalls here done those guys are just working on that last waterfall up there which is going to face directly towards that patio table once that's in we can go ahead and start grading out all that berm back there putting in our retaining walls on the back side here getting a few plants in that we have plants make all the difference when you're finishing up a water feature other than that we're in pretty good shape we brought the power washer out today clean up some of the driveway and the sidewalk so once all that's done we'll be able to get all this graded out get the plants in and fill this thing up with water we're going to turn this thing on Are you ready to see this? I'm gonna flip this around, show you what this project turned out like, and we are out of here. Check this out. Beautiful upper pooling area here. That thing turned out great. It's plenty deep for that lily. You can see it's already clearing up almost instantaneously. This nice little pinch waterfall right here turned out perfect. It gets nice and loud down here. That sheet style almost waterfall into the shallow gravel turned out awesome. Look at the movement on the water. We went ahead, like I said, popped a couple of her plants in. That lily though in this upper pool just really makes this for me. You can see a nice, very slow moving waterfall right there on the right side and then we even have a little bit of a secret waterfall on that left side there that turned out phenomenal that was all micho that built that waterfall just enough water coming out of here nice slow you almost can't even hear it but it right there that's a perfect place for birds this is nice and deep like i said that lily's gonna love it here shallows up right into that pinch fall this is the view from the patio here she'll be sitting at her dining table almost like a mini pond right there down into that pond this waterfall mm -hmm. 